right, guys and gals, lovers of lore and hunters from around the world. I've been reading, writing, and making videos about the lore for Hunt Showdown for... <laughs> Damn! Quite a while now. And I think it's about that time when we bust out a tier list for the current roster of stories and events contained within the game. These are of course just my personal opinions about the lore, and you are more than welcome to have your own opinions and disagree with my particular list here. Though you're probably wrong. I know I'm technically missing a few, but I've tried to keep it to the major pieces of lore, for now at least. So let's get right into it. Hunter Q&A, oh god, I don't know whose idea these were but they were such a huge miss for me. They fell so far outside of the narrative in terms of mood, atmosphere, and structure. The writing was abysmal. Like, the reptilians was literally cringe-inducing. It was absolutely awful. F-tier. Definitely. Moving on. The Butcher. I know, the story is both reference and homage to Frankenstein, and as well a recall to ancient mythology, the creation of life from Korea and all that. I just find it a bit silly. I like the backstory to the butcher, how he became fire resistant and all that, but I can't put it higher than D tier. The grunts control against their will, like their souls trapped within their bodies, forced to act out violence against others. It's basically the original voodoo zombie. It's an absolute awesome piece of lore. A tier. The Armoreds. They're a bit lackluster for me. I think walking that fine line between giving the reader enough information while shrouding a part of the content in mystery is something that Hunt does quite well most of the time, but I do think the Armoreds are a bit too shrouded. The writing is not a problem at all. The writing is great. There's just not a lot of it, which is a shame because I, I love the Armoreds and I would love a bit more backstory on these guys. So, unfortunately, D tier. The Stalker Beetle. It's actually a cute little story. I quite enjoyed it. The bonding between the hunter breeding, the stalker beetles and so on. C tier. The Moon Saga. This was by far the worst the lore of Hunt has ever had to offer. No comparison. And I'll tell you why. While the Traitor's Moon had a few redeeming moments, like the sacrificial rituals involving Hesh and Mario Chinkov, which I really enjoyed, it all quickly just spiraled into an absolute dumpster fire of a disaster. And the Serpent Moon and the Devil's Moon were even worse. First of all, some guy had sex with the moon. I'm not kidding. That happened. I, I still can't get over that. Not only was that immensely out of character for the lore as a whole, but it never went anywhere either. Like, it was completely fucking absurd. But then... It got even worse. Mr. Cherry comes out of nowhere, who might single-handedly be the worst addition to the Lord of Hunt showdown, period. He isn't established beforehand in any way. He just barges into the universe like an estranged uncle and asserts himself as part of the family. He monologues, snaps his fingers to trigger intricate plans of double crossing and laughs like a goddamn maniac. He's a literal mustache twirling cartoon villain and I imagine that he probably looks something like Dick Dastardly. On top of that, there's the story about Kevin Linus. Oh my fucking god. Most of the dialogue from that storyline sounds like it's stolen directly from Pokemon. As if Kevin and the others are trying to stop Team Rocket or something. It's a literal B-movie script. It's F. It's F-tier. The worst of the worst. That's it. Moving on. Hellhounds. I like the Hellhounds, as well as the story that's attached to them, but it's similar to the Stark Beetle and the Armoreds. There's not a lot of meat on the bones. I would have loved a deeper understanding of their origin, the creation, and why they look the way they do. I do, however, love the story of the hunter that loses his dog to the crippling insanity of the corruption. It's so dark, sad, and has a great ending. This is beats here for me. The Water Devils. Actually one of my favorite enemies within the game in terms of look and behavior. I think they're immensely fascinating as a gameplay mechanic as well, but their lore isn't that exciting. It's a bit in the middle for me, not great, not terrible. C tier. The emulator. I like the emulator a lot because though it isn't reflected within the game, maybe it got retconned or maybe it's beyond gameplay limitations, it just seems to suggest that maybe, just maybe, 
there is something else than the sculptor acts about there and i think that adds an even deeper layer to this already amazing world but even more important is that it's one of the only entries that outright teaches us about the unreliable narrator within the lore of hunt showdown absolute a tier for me quick play so damnation used to be a real thing within the lore though i don't know if it's been retconned or written out or they just forgot about it but too much of the other side will both consume and corrupt you. There's a reason tier 3 hunters look the way they do. And Quickplay had an amazing way of wrapping that up and why the hunters keep going into the bios and oh, it's so good. It just seems that maybe the writers have forgotten about all of that. Too bad, but A tier for me. William Salter's Journal. I can still read through this and get excited about what the lore used to be. The experiments with William and the researchers locking his mental and physical deterioration from his exposure to the corruption and following William documenting his own decline into insanity, it's just absolute A-tier, absolute A-tier. The Assassin In terms of how much within the story you can connect from in-game to real-life events, this one is about as good as it gets. There are so many references to real life and hints to what Vincent might have been a part of in the many years before the symptoms of the corruption even began happening in Louisiana. But even better, it also leaves you with so many more questions. Amazing story. Eight year. Dark awaits. This is one of my favorite entries in all of the lore. It gives a deep insight into how both the clues and dark side works and how it affects the hunters. Whenever I come back to hunt lore, it's usually this piece that draws my attention. It's so well written. It's here for me. The Meatheads. Not only is the story behind the Meatheads absolutely vile and twisted, but it's also a great addition in terms of giving depth to the lore behind the corruption and how it functions. If you haven't read or seen this, you have to go check this out. It's here, absolutely. Hives. Just about one of the most brutal entities within the Hunt universe. The story behind them is so dark and vile. When I first read this, I was absolutely blown away by the team's horrific creativity. Absolute S tier. Amazing. The spider. Okay, I'm just, I'm just gonna put it out there. It's S tier. Not only is the creature itself iconic for Hunt, it's amazingly disturbing. And the lore attached to it subjects us to the mystery of how bosses banishment and respawn works as well. There's so much depth to this entry, especially if you read it in combination with the trials of Dr. Reed. It's phenomenal. S tier. Scrappy. It's a tale of tragic loss, depression and neglect. A lot of reading between the lines has to be done here. Nevertheless, it's one of my favorite stories within the lore. S tier for me. The Tide Saga. I know there is still another event to go, but I'm not holding my breath in terms of any of these events picking up the slack. My main issue with these entries is not the writing. Well, it is, but it's not just the writing. I don't think the Tide Saga is as bad as the Moon Saga, but they do suffer the exact same flaw. It's that they're so disjointed from what the Hunt Showdown lore used to be, because we as the readers, we used to be detectives. It was up to us to piece all of these findings together. Transcripts, pictures, diaries, letters, newspaper clippings, and so on. Like that fragmented style of storytelling with an unreliable narrator. That was exactly what made me fall in love with Hunt's lore to begin with. But now, it's mostly just monologues or dialogue in the form of text scrawled in notebooks, wax cylinders, or logs. The lore reads more like a story now. And that ruins it for me. I get it. It makes it much easier to convey a narrative and a fluid story that moves through A to C. But that's not what the lore used to be about. We didn't have a clear picture. We didn't have a clear storyline. And that was okay. Because it added to the mystery. I just find this new style of writing a bit cheap and somewhat lazy. And though the story about Enola and Princess was a great read. What cemented this to easier for me was that one segment with the black coat that read like an awful fan fiction first of all the black coat has companions I, I don't know about that but second of all the black coat being a spokesperson for gender equality really the black coat you mean 
The cold-hearted murderer who lived for no one but himself? The guy who in the lore has more enemies than he has bullets? The man who was about to murder his own daughters in cold blood? Yeah, what an in-character moment for the Black Coat. The only thing potentially redeeming this in the Moon Saga might be that both of them, and I'm still holding on to this theory, are in-universe fictions, like bad as they seem. Meaning, none of it happened. Especially not that part where everyone clapped. Easier, easier, easier. And that just leaves us with bad as they seem. From the birth of Lynch, to the appearance of the twins, the creation of the serum, and the death of Dr. Hoff Jones, this particular piece of lore might be the most cinematic representation that exists within the universe. It's also what made me fall in love with Lynch as a character, who by the way, is my all-time favorite thing within Hunt Showdown. To me, nothing ranks beyond Lynch. Unfortunately, it is an in-universe novel, so whether this Lynch actually exists or not, we don't know. But I hope Crytek decides to expand on Lynch in the future, so absolute S tier for me. Alright, that just about does it. Which brings me to you, because I would love to hear what your favorite part of the lore is. So drop a comment below, tell me why I'm right, or tell me why I'm wrong. Either way, I would love to hear your input. And as always, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one.